All right. Uh, hi. So, sorry, I'm uh, five five minutes late. I think uh, I had a bit of a technical issue, so I'm struggling to get online. I'm sorry for that. Uh, <clears throat> so, okay. Let's only have eight people. I guess we might as well just proceed. So, I, I thought we would have this really short interaction, really, to give you people. Oh, by the way, I hope everybody is fine. Uh, everybody is fine. I don't want to. Yeah, we want to. Yeah. But if we could yeah. the mute our microphone, but then the you just unmute it when, when you want to raise an issue or concern or something. Thank you. <clears throat> right. Okay, so, so, so I thought we'd have this really short interaction to, to, um, to discuss a couple of things, really. Uh, an update on the Moji document, um, an update on resources associated with Lake Visit Moji number one, um, details to do with uh, scheduled assignment number one. Uh, so there was an open date associated with June, is it June 20, 26, if I believe. Um, and then, I mean, Pierre and I have, have been thinking about how best to do this, especially the part that has to do with the practicals, right? I mean, if, if you, so if, if you draw comparisons between the structure of this course and these other courses that you're doing, you notice that uh, this course has um, quite a lot of practical components associated with this and, and, and so, we're still trying to figure out the best way of doing this, um, but I just thought I would point us in the right direction. Right? So we're going to make certain assumptions as we are working through the practicals. The assumptions we're going to make is that people know how to install the tools, or the software tools that we're going to be using, right? So the assumption would be that you've managed to install the tools and you've configured them, right? Of course, if you have a challenge, you can always reach out to, to us for that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen because I've prepared some um, really short, <clears throat> all right. Uh, uh, so it, it, I'll, I'll ask the class rep to send me uh, the other people's details. So the reason why you are asking to be let into the room is because you probably provided us with a different email address. So if you have another email address, that like you normally use to connect to platforms like the one we're using right now, send them to us so that we add you to the list so that you don't have to request to enter the meeting. All right, I'm gonna assume people can see my screen. Yes, no? No answer, okay, don't know. Can, can you hear me and can you see my screen? Yes? Yes. Able to hear you. Thank you very much. All right, great. Thanks. So, like I said, this is going to be a really short introduction. I thought we'd walk through these these things here. Right? I'll start off with the Modi document, right? I don't know how many of you have noticed this. Probably not, but uh, the 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 Modi document that Pierre and I were the Modi document that we've been working on is ready now. It's still in draft. It's still a draft anyway, but it's now ready. So you, what you notice from the Astria site is that the previous thing we used to call the module document has been moved down to supplementary materials because we feel that there's still important information that people can, can salvage from there, right? So, oh, is someone wants to come in, Helen. Okay. Right, so, so there we go. When you log on to Austria, the, the old Moji document has been moved here. We're not using that as a guide. We are using the new document, which is here, right? It's right now, it's uh, unlike the old document, which is a PDF document, this thing will actually take you to a URL, right? Uh, so an external, it's, it's an external resource essential. And the reason we're doing that for now is because there, there are bound to be a few other additional changes because there are people that are ideally IDE works um, with a sort of workflow where once you develop a document, somebody has to revise it before it's finalized. So it's still in its draft form, 
Um, but that is what we are using as a guide, right? So take note, is this document that you need to gain access to. It's properly tagged actually, right? And really when you go to the link, what you have access to is, is a, I guess a 30 page document or something. Um, unlike the old document which had uh, notes embedded within it, what we have in this, in this revised document is just uh, guidelines. So specific units associated with each, well specific, yeah, specific units, subunits associated with each module unit. Right, uh, so things like the broad objectives and um, I guess uh, details of what sort of exercises are going to be associated with that particular unit. Right, so take note of that. Uh, the, the document idea is, uh, it's a Google Docs document and it's actually uh, accessible by everybody I think. So if I can, if I can go here actually. A second. Oh, sorry, just give me a second. I should have opened these links way before, but just open them right now. Uh, two. Right, so the link is under modules, obviously, and uh, it's right here. When you open this thing up, what you notice is that uh, it's an external resource that looks something similar to this, right? Uh, so this is the actual document link that you need to gain access to. And like I said, you have access to uh, details of what's going to be covered in each particular module and the objectives associated with what's going to be covered in there. Uh, I've just pasted the actual hyperlink to the external document uh, in case people don't have access to Astria or something. Okay, I hope that's clear. Please feel free to interrupt me if you need to interrupt me or something. Um, great. So in terms of the resources, another thing you've noticed by now is that the module, right? The module component, this thing. So if you go on Astria, what you notice is that uh, the, the course site itself is broken up into small distinct modules, right? So what you immediately notice is that there are resources now associated with, <coughs> excuse me, module number one, right? The, oh, someone wants to come in again, Emma. It's totally, okay. Uh, so, what you immediately notice is that module number one has resources associated with it, right? So. These are ideally things that are going to help us uh, get an in-depth in understanding of module number one. The, the only thing that is missing right now, right? Uh, and I should upload the handouts. The only thing that's missing right now is the screencast, which uh, we are hoping we can produce uh, before Monday, actually. Uh, so bear with us, just give us until Monday. And then and ideally, if you look at module one, really, it's probably one of the easiest modules to follow through. But, we produce a screencast nonetheless. It's given us until Monday and then we produce that. So the, you watch the screencast, go through the slides, and then you go through these supplementary materials, right? These are, mo most, of these, most of these books, most of these uh, resources, by the way, are coming from, if not all of them actually, they're coming from uh, one of the recommended texts associated with this, with this course, right? So uh, what we've done is just split it up uh, so that it's a lot easier for you to follow through the different components that we are pointing to in these supplemental materials. Right, so take note of that. Resources on Moodle, right, they've been added there. The only thing that's missing is the screencast, which will be available by, by Monday, right? All right. Uh, and then the other thing, right, is that, I don't know if you figured this out already, but when you access, when you go to the Moodle, the Astria site and you, you access this, um, this the, the first entry associated with each module it gives you an overview of uh, essentially it's just a it's it's just text that has been extracted from the main module document, right? So each one of these each one of these modules on Astria, right? Module one, module two, module three, module four, module five, all the way up to module six. 
they'll have a small little component, right? The first entry is the overview of the module, which is just extracted from the module document. When you click on that thing, it takes you to a page, it's an HTML page essentially, it takes you to a page that just has an extract from the main document. So if, if this is a lot easier for you to, to consume, then maybe you can gain access to it directly rather than looking at the entire document. I, I don't know, I don't know if it's gonna be helpful or not, but just sort of make mention of that, right? But all of these things are associated with each of the individual modules that we have, all the six modules have an overview, right? If you expand this, you have an overview, 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 right? Overview, all the way up to six. I hope that's making sense, hope it is. <clears throat> uh, and the idea, by the way, is to make sure that uh, as, as you are going through these resources, you just have a single, I, I guess a single source of truth where you can extract whatever information that you want, right, which is Astria, rather than putting things in all these different uh, locations, okay? Um, I don't know if, if that's clear. Resources, that's fine. And then something else that's really, that was really important for us uh, is for this session is this whole notion of the tools we're going to use, especially for module number two and module number three. And the reason why, like I said, the reason why we thought of mentioning this early on is because we want to get to a stage where by the time we are covering module two, which is uh, after next week, people would have already figured out how to use the tools that we're going to be using. These are very basic tools, by the way, for well, in certain instances, maybe the installation, you might have to struggle a little bit, which is why you have a bit of time to work with, right? Uh, so we've associated what we're calling homework tasks, right? These are not graded, but these are things that you want to work towards in preparation for module number two and module number three. When Piela starts, uh, um, I guess, handling module number four and number five, he will probably I don't know what sort of approach he's going to decide to take. It might be different from my approach. Um, I think for the modules that I'm handling myself, I think this is going to work best if people already have a hang of how to work with these tools, right? So the tasks are very simple, right? I would like to ask that by June 6, everybody should be able to familiarize themselves with these two uh, ER diagramming tools, right? So Lucy chart and Dia Diagram Editor. Again, the reason we are doing this is we're going to make the assumption once we start module number two, we're making the assumption that everybody knows how to use these diagram, these ER diagram tools, right? And by the way, it doesn't have to be these two, it could be any other two if you want, right? Enterprise Architect, nobody cares, right? Uh, but if you want to follow through with the examples that we are going to be walking you through, you probably want to familiarize yourself with Lucid Chart and Dia Diagram Editor. Why? Because some of these examples you'll be walked through will involve us sharing the things that we are going to be working on. So for instance, observe, if I'm using Dia, right? And I say, I'm, I'm showcasing an example of, uh, oh my goodness, how to use uh, Dia. Let's say if I, do I have an example of thing here? Hmm. All right, so if I'm using Dia and I'm walking through this, this is just a basic example, bear with us. But let's say I'm using Dia and uh, we get to a stage where I'm showcasing this, right? At, at some stage, I will have to save this and share it with you, right? Now, the only way you'll be able to use this save file because it's in a specific format is if you know how to use this particular tool that I'll be using, right? What I'm trying to say is examples in this course are going to make use of examples for module number two are going to make use of Lucid Chart and Dia Diagram Editor, right? So, oh, is a, someone wants to come in, Henry. I hope that's clear. Now, these tools are pretty trivial. There's a reason why there's a method to magnets. There's a reason why we use Dia, right? Well, we use Lucid Chart and Dia. Uh, number one, they're freely available, right? These are open source tools. No, they're freely available, but to a certain extent for Lucid Chart, it's like, uh, if you remember your copyright and uh, licensing discussion, I don't know which course this was, must have been EDU 1020. Uh, you must have been, been introduced to, uh, hmm, I don't know which sort of, is this freeware? Not free, not, anyway, I've forgotten the type of tool that, the type of the class of 
licenses associated with LucidChat. But it turns out that LucidChat, right? LucidChat Lucid allows you to, I apologize, there are people trying to come in as I'm seeing, so I have to let them in. Sorry for that. Yeah, anyway. It, it turns out that LucidChat, right? LucidChat has a, um, they allow you, if, if, if you have an account that's associated with an institution of higher learning, an educational institution, uh, you can sign up to use LucidChat for free. Now, I'm not really sure how, how far you guys have gone with uh, regards to gaining access to UNSA branded email addresses. You should have access to UNSA email addresses, I think. I'm, I'm surprised that uh, most people have personal email accounts associated with their Astria IDs here. You probably want to, if you don't have access to those things, you probably want the class rep to follow up with IDE so that you ask uh, a bit of effort, you could maybe mute your microphone, wherever you are. You probably want the class rep, Ms. Sheila, would, 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 oh my God. Sorry, there's a bit of echo coming from Chile here. But Sheila probably had to follow up with ID to so that everybody is assigned an UNSA email account. Now, the UNSA email account to enable you to use LucidChat. Very useful, right? Very useful because uh, you work with it in the cloud. And so saving, uh, saving you know, work that you're working on becomes a lot easier if, if you're using that sort of approach. And also, more importantly, um, integration with tools such as Google Docs and uh, Google Sheets is almost seamless. Right? And that's a plus because in the event that you find yourself working on an assignment that involves uh, incorporating these sort of diagrams in the assignment, you can easily work with a Google Doc document and then just seamlessly integrate the document within Google Docs. Right? Uh, so our interest in, I wonder if there's a way of having the class rep, giving the class rep access so that they, she allows people to come into the chat. Just have to get out of, full screen mode, I'm sorry for that. Our interest in Lucy chat is specifically tied to these things we're calling AI diagrams, right? And you notice that with, with Lucy charts, actually it's much, much easier, right? You already have access to templates that you can reuse, right? So what we're going to be working towards in module number two is learning how to design these things we're calling relational databases, right? So we'll be coming up with these AI diagrams, things like this. You notice that the temp templating in, in Lucy charts is a lot easier, right? Tied to integration is just to showcase this. If I'm working on, if I'm working on a document within, uh, let's say Google Docs document, right? Uh, example here. Come on. Uh, so let's say I'm, I'm, I'm creating, I'm, I'm working through an assignment where I'm required to integrate some uh, some diagram, right? Let's say an AI diagram as an example. I'm using Google Docs here, but because I've integrated Google Docs, my Google Docs has an add-on specific to LucidChat, right? If you see this LucidChat diagrams, integrating it within my Google Docs document is seamless. So I'll just go to add-ons and then I'll go to LucidChat diagrams and then I'll say insert a chart. And then I would specify the chart that is associated with my LucidChat account and then just put it within here. Seamless integration. That way, and I have to log in. That way, I would be, I'll, I'll, write, I'll write my assignment, which is just an example, and then I'll insert the chart somewhere here. Right? So this is what you want to think about as you're working through these tools or something. I hope that makes sense. So, multi chart, right? Very easy tool to use. The only thing you have to do here is uh, just go to this link and sign up, right? You can sign up with a personal account, but I would highly encourage you to use your UNSA branded email accounts. You should have UNSA branded email accounts, by the way. Great. Uh, and then there is Gaia, right? Gaia is more or less like a desktop-based application. So you download it and then you install it on your computer. Right? Very easy to use too. Um, it's been around for a couple of years now. Uh, and, and in fact, I'm trying to see if there's any other 
diagrams that you're probably going to, when you're working with clear and maybe at some stage you'll be required to come up with wireframes associated with whatever web applications you'd be designing or something, I do believe you can use dia for that, right? So it's a multi-purpose tool. It's, it's a diagram editor that allows you to create various types of diagrams, right? Engineers use this to come up with circuit diagrams, for instance. Uh, uh, you can use this to come up with class diagrams if you're programming or something using object-oriented, uh, an object-oriented uh, programming approach. Uh, so Daya, right? All you have to do is go to this link, download the application, install it, right? You install it so that you're able to, the end goal again is you want to be able to create these things, the ER diagrams using Daya. You notice, uh, I mean, it looks different here, but it's the, the message is the same. In as, as, in as much as the diagrams that you, you create in Daya are, are not as, aesthetically pleasing as those in lucid chart, it's the same thing, right? What we are going to be learning, it turns out, is how to understand what sort of relationships to define between entities. You know, what sort of aspects we associate with an entity, right? And all of these things you can do irrespective of whether you decide to use Daya or lucid chart. Uh, so just to showcase to you that Daya is a pretty easy to use tool, right? Uh, it's a very basic interface, if you can see here. Um, and really, you can you can you can work with so many different uh, different diagrams. Even chemists use this, which is a bit strange. Yeah, chemical engineering. I don't know what this is. Circuit diagrams. If you if you are doing networking, I guess you'd be able to create network diagrams here or something, right? Which, which is quite nice, in my opinion, kind of like this. Really nice. So Daya, right? Our interest though in Daya is going to be, observe, if I reset my menu, our interest when we install Daya will be, at, once we get to module number two, we want to be able to, to be able to draw tools associated with this thing here called ER, entity relationships, because essentially what we'll be doing is defining entity relationships, right? Uh, so you have your entity there, you know, uh, you have the relationship, uh, you have connectors, I guess. Yeah, connectors that you, you associate to different entities. This kind of, but, but anyway, we will get to the stage where we, we, we learn exactly how to create these relationships. But for now, the task is for us to install Daya. You just go here, you download Daya, uh, and then you just familiarize yourself with the interface. I hope that's fine. So Daya, you go here, you download, and then familiarize yourself with the interface. Make sure you choose the ER option here. In certain instances, by the way, Daya is so useful that you can download what they call stencils. So if you go online and I say Daya stencils or something, ER diagrams, I can, I can, that's the wrong stream for diagrams, but I can gain access to stencils that perhaps are somewhat, uh, more aesthetically pleasing than more aesthetically pleasing than than the default one, right? So that you're able to create these things, I guess. I don't know if this is the it stands for the default. This should be a default though. I don't know if there's there's one that you can use for our goal is going to be this really. It's just I was trying to see if we can find better stencils here for dia, but in case people are uh, uh, as concerned with aesthetics as light on, I normally pay particular attention to this. Like, I don't know what your thoughts are, but this, this is, this is ugly in comparison to this, right? This is quite nice in my opinion. Uh, really nice. Uh, incidentally though, when you're working in lucid chat, right? If I go to lucid chat here, uh, it's not a lecture by the way, it's just uh, trying to showcase uh, why we want to work on these tools, lucid chat. If I go to Lucy chat, the, the, you you could you could you could take the old school approach where you you decide, and I guess I'll need to log in using my own account here. You could take the the old school approach where you where you uh, instead of instead of integrating your charts via Google Docs or something or in the cloud, uh, what you could do is you can create this within Lucy chat and then export it. Right, so if you notice here, if I open this thing, uh, I'll be able to, to create an ER diagram, which is quite easy, really. This is 
what I have, and then it's just point and click, really. Let's say, uh, uh, oh, I'll just say student details or something. Students or something. Uh, lecturers, right? Uh, I'm reaching here. I'll just say library or something. If you, or I'm just trying to showcase, and then you define the tables associated with this. Let's say uh, student ID. Uh, of course, I mean, you'd have to define the name. You'd have to define things like uh, primary keys and you know, all those other funny cardinalities that we'll discuss. Uh, student address, right? And then the key thing here is uh, trying to showcase that you can actually save this, right? So export it as a PNG or as a PDF. If you don't feel like integrating this within Google Docs, right? So that once you export this as a PNG, you hit on download this thing. Um, yes, I know I have limited access. I'm using a student account for Pizza. So, uh, so that you have access to this, right? And this is what we'll be doing essentially, right? So, and then you can then crop this, I suppose, and I don't know what you would be doing with this, but you kind of crop this so that uh, so that uh, you you can easily integrate this within. Oh my eyesight is getting poor, I suppose. So that you can easily integrate this within whatever whatever application you feel like using. Like crop this and then you say save. Yeah. So so just familiarize yourself with the interface because the number of assumptions are going to be made here. Uh, and again, this this so-called uh, this mode of instruction for a technically intensive kind of. Um, course like this makes it a lot harder to help with. You know, I do case if we had lab sessions, what we would do by the way is would be, what we would, would be doing here is would have lab, dedicated lab sessions where you sit in a lab and then somebody's walking through to help you fix this, but there's no one who's going to be around to help you do this. So most of this is going to be, uh, it's, it's going to have to be done by, most of the hard work is going to be done by us sadly. So you boom, right? You have your Microsoft Word document and then you do a thing here. This is good. This is beautiful, actually, in my opinion. It's much better than, look at this, our colleagues. If, if you were to, this is much more beautiful than Dyer, right? If I was to go to Dyer, this has become a Dyer kind of like, uh, if I export this thing here, and I'll just, and then click and then I'll just uh, export this as well. Uh, I'll export it as PNG and then I'll save it in my home directory as well. This is horrible. Uh, if, I, if I open this uh, up and try and integrate it within a document, it, I know it's become a, less, a session where we are looking at, we're discussing aesthetics here, I do apologize, but helps put the point across. Maybe at, at some stage, you yourself will make a decision on what to use based on these other, on these things that I'm highlighting. Aesthetics, ease of use, right? These are things to think about, right? So same thing, look and feel is different, but then if, if the important things here is being able to define entities using the prescribed or recommended notation. It turns out that there's a notation that you have to follow. There are rules, right? Relationships. Uh, entities. Anyway, on with it. Uh, so, but it turns out that Lucid Chat is, is not the only thing, and that is not the only thing that's available out there. There's more. And I do encourage you to explore. In fact, if you do a, a simple search online, uh, software used to create ER diagrams, you notice that there's a whole bunch of them. What we, the tools that we are going to prescribe are tools that we've used in the past, tools that we've experimented with and we know work better and we know have, uh, they don't have a steep learning curve, right? Uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean that this is an exhaustive list of potential tools that you can use. These are just tools. If you want, you can find a better tool yourself. Uh, no one is going to penalize you for choosing a tool that you feel comfortable using other than the ones we are prescribing here. But take note that we are prescribing this because as we are working through the examples, we shall be sharing artifacts that are created using these tools, which is why you want to learn how to use these tools. Right? If you go online and search this, right, it's, it's amazing, really. Maybe we can do this together as well. 
collaborative learning here. If I say uh, entity relation, relationship diagram software, let's see if Wikipedia has a list. I'm sure there's, there's bound to be a created list here. Oof. Uh, No, okay. <clears throat> and you'll see, Chad, I don't know how they've, they've poisoned the search phrases. But anyways, uh, if we look at maybe this first entry here, uh, I don't know who created this, but I'm just saying here, uh, oof, I've never used Adobe Illustrator for this. You notice that uh, the tools that, come on, the tools that they're listing here, LibreOffice, I didn't know Libre, wow, I didn't know you could use LibreOffice for this, right? Diagram designer, these are strange tools that are having, oh, there we go, Lucy Chat is number six, it's there, right? It shows you Smart Draw, please, Yed maybe is there. Is, there, is it there? No, Yed is not there. In the past, I've also used Yed, I think, uh, why it right, does more or less the same thing. It's also, I think it's cloud-based as well, similar to, uh, it's a graphic, it's similar to uh, Lucid Chart, right? Uh, but th the thing here, colleagues, is that uh, it really doesn't matter what tool you use. The takeaway lesson here is, doesn't matter what tool you use, right? Uh, but just take note that there's a reason why we're prescribing some of these tools. Um, I, I decided to use, uh, I, I decided to use, um, I decided to use this diagrams.net because similar to Lucy Chat, it allows you to actually work in the cloud, right? So you store everything in, let's say you specify whether you want to integrate or to associate your Dropbox account or your Google Drive account with this, right? So you notice th the aesthetics are different, but the information that is being conveyed in these diagrams is the same. Relationships, there's a prescribed way of defining entities, right? This is what we're going to be learning. Right. Uh, okay. And by the way, there's there's a desktop version for this particular tool uh, that you access via diagrams.net. So you can go there, draw the I/O draw I/O desktop version. And there's uh, there's uh, this, there's actually executables for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So there's no excuse here. Ah, uh, oh, also Google Chrome OS, which is quite nice. I hope this is making sense, like I said, so for module two, and then for module three, because it turns out that module two and module three are closely linked to each other. Once we get to a stage where we start working towards module three, the assumption that we will be making again is that everybody has installed SQL Lit, everybody has installed DB Browser, right? So you, you'd know exactly how, you'd have a fully functional installation of these, both of these tools. Because it turns out that our focus for module number three is essentially, module number three is exclusively <coughs> centered around learning SQL syntax. Now, learning SQL syntax does not or shouldn't really involve us going through the gory details of trying to figure out if uh, I can get there, trying to learn how to install software. No, right? We're not going to waste time doing that, which is why we're saying by the time we get to module number three, we should already, I think it was 30 pages, it says 20 here. We should already, we should already, we should already have the uh, installed SQL lit, right? Our focus is just to learn how to write SQL statements. That is all, right? Uh, so the assumption we'll be making by the time we get to the discussion of module number three is that everybody has installed SQL lit and DB browser. These are very easy to, very easy tools to work with, to install rather than configure. If you have a challenge, again, please reach out to us, right? Uh, if you struggle with the installation and you're confused, you know, installing this, just reach out to us via email or something and we'll be able to help out. This is why we're here, right? But uh, for you to download SQL Lit, what you do is you go here, right? I get SQL Lit, by the way, this, most of these tools we're gonna be working with are freely available and or are open source. So SQL for instance, is free available, it's also open source. You go to sqlit.org, www.sqlit.org, and then go to the downloads page and then you'll be able to download sqlit. Um, has immense applications, right? It's actually, it's one of the reasons why we kind of use it. It has a relatively small footprint as well. 
right? Uh, suffice to say that as you transition to mode number four, you shall uh, be introduced to MySQL, right? Which is another relational database management system software, right? Similar to SQL. Uh, so anyway, download SQL here. And we want to be able to get to a stage where we're able to work through with SQL lead, right? DB browser happens to be this interface, this layered interface that we, we use to interact with SQL lead in a user-friendly manner. So rather than accessing SQL lead, uh, rather than accessing, wow. rather than accessing SQL lead like so, uh, for that. Hmm. Rather than accessing SQL lead like, Right, uh, rather than, oh wow, I don't have, uh, maybe it's in lecture number seven or something. But it was here though. Wait, just a second, I'm trying to see if I can show us an example of, uh, Okay, it's the next number five. So rather than rather than accessing SQL lead like this, uh, so if you notice what I'm going to do here. Okay, it's, no, it's messed up as well. So and rather than accessing the database like this using this terminal, right? This is not very helpful now, is it? It's not very helpful in any way. Instead of doing this, you want to use a tool that is more user friendly, right? Which is why we are also uh, prescribing that you download DB browser. So you have a much more user friendly interface similar to this, right? And the idea behind DB browser is you, you open it up uh, like so, and then you'd be able to, to have a nice user friendly interface that you use to write, if I can, I think I opened this recently, that you use to write to, to Escute SQL statements, right? So we, our focus is just this, right? So we want to get to a stage where we're able to use a user-friendly interface like this rather than using some terminal command, right? Which is why we're prescribing DB browser. And don't worry, all of these things are going to make sense before end of June, actually, as it goes. So, but we must install this software before that. Is that fine? Uh, so. Again, I just thought I'll just wrap up by, by kind of saying that assignment number one open date is June 26th, so it will be available by June 26th. And tentatively, it's going to be based on module number two and module number three. The way we're doing this is because of the practical nature of the course, all of the assignments are essentially going to be uh, practical inclined. And so we've tentatively chosen module number two and three, two, two or three, Module number four is going to be open on June 26th. Uh, I, I hope this is going to be enough for people to get started with this. I do encourage you to please, right? This is the thing here. <clears throat> these dates here, they're important because by, by these dates, we shall be working towards the, uh, right, these dates here that I have here, they're important because they'll, they'll help you understand the things we're going to be talking about, actually. They want to make sure these tools are, are available. Uh, unless if there are questions. I don't know if that was making sense. Again. Hello? No question. Am I even online? Did, I, I hope I didn't get disconnected. Jesus. Oh, okay. I'm online. I, 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 was, I, was, I was actually thinking I was disconnected because of the silence is deafening here. I was thinking, now I have fallen... Uh, uh, pray to this. Uh, I remember this interaction I had. I was talking to myself for close to, I think, 10 minutes, right? And then someone politely sent me a message, right? Say, uh, I'm sorry, but I think you're offline here. And so I had to double back and figure out exactly. So 
I'm glad that I was still online there. Uh, okay, what? I have a question. Oh, yes, Miss. Yeah. I wanted to find out. Uh, so, you we can have a choice. Either you choose Lucy, Lucy chart. On the on the diagramming tools, uh, do you, do you get anything, or you just choose one to work with? Uh, just choose one, but I would highly recommend. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the painful process of replicating. Whenever there's an example, I'll have uh, the artifact created using uh, Lucy chart and another artifact created using Dyer. But if I were you. These are important skills, by the way. If you look at lucid chart, I don't know if you have, you, you figured this out yet, but if you look at something like lucid chart, right? Very okay. soon, I think it's in 40, 20, have you done, oh, you did 2034. In 2014, in 2014, okay. which is in fourth year, after next year, it's coming. But well, next year, sorry. In 2014, one of the things you do is, as part of the proposal component of 2014, when you're crafting a proposal, you produce things like word broken structures and Gantt charts and now people struggle with these things, right? But it turns out that if you develop a skill in that area, surprise, surprise, look at this. If I come here and, uh, oh, if I come here and go to the Lucy chart homepage and then I, 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 I scan through the different templates that I have, you notice that one of the templates is probably going to be, oh, planning, project training, there should be a gun chart here. Timelines, gun charts, yeah? So if you learn how to use this tool, you can apply it to different scenarios. It's not just 8010. This is, okay. in fact, this is part of the reason why we introduce some of these things, right? You're, you're not just, we're not just doing this for the exam. We're acquiring certain skills that we are going to hopefully reuse once we get up now. This is not applicable to you because in fact, some of you are already doing this at work, right? might be able to pick up a few skills that might be applicable, right? So these are very powerful tools, actually. Like if you look at, uh, I gloss through Dyer, for instance, you look at the types of tools that you can create. Business process model, is this business process models or something? I think so. Yeah, I think, I don't know if this is the one. Uh, let me just, probably not, but I'm trying to think of people, people that might be working in an area that where uh, they'll be required to, create some, oh, I was talking to somebody who works uh, for uh, a certain, uh, a, a very good friend of mine, librarian from Zika's, right? And they're developing some policy documents and what they are doing, by the way, uh, boom, a very good, good colleague, uh, what they're doing is uh, developing process documents. And when you're creating process documents, right? Or policy documents rather, you embed processes and procedures in there. Now, this is where you do something like this. You create a flow chart to say, this is how you create these things. I hope this is a way to do this. Probably a different type of flow chart here, but bad example. And so I'm trying to see if I could find a, a realistic example that's applicable to our domain, right? This is weird. Sybase UML not applicable to us. Flow chart. Database. So the ER diagram uh, is more generic, but this is the one that's more specific to databases, obviously, right? And if people can see that, where you get to, uh, to define these things here. Uh, anyway, but, but I was trying to see if I could find uh, uh, extensor that's applicable to what you guys are doing. Ah, this is sad. I can't say it's not say it. If there were network engineers in the room would say you, you go to uh, Cisco networking, right? Where you create network diagrams, but there are no network engineers here. But anyway, the bottom line here is it's you, if I were you, I would actually test out all the tools. Okay. Both of them because, yeah, because in fact, the reason why you want to try out all the two, in fact, maybe throw in another one, maybe three of them is you'll be able to make an informed decision of which sort of tool you will adopt as you are working through the assignment. You want okay. to use something you'll be comfortable with, right? So I don't know if that answers your question. My recommendation is use both of them actually, Lucy Chat and Dia Diagram Editor. And, uh, the, the, what, the diagram.net? Oh yeah, good. Yeah. yeah, this is, I guess, optional. I included it because um, uh, I like the way the, 
the, the thing, right? It, it, for starters, you should notice there are a range of tools that you can create similar to Lucidchart. And then also the attractive feature to this when you compare it with Dyer is that you're working exclusively in the cloud. Okay. The obvious, yeah, the obvious advantages here, right? You don't have to save things, right? Oh, my assignment, my computer got stolen, right? Nobody would believe you. I'm sorry to have to say this. They'll think you're lying, right? Uh, maybe, yeah. Unless if you submit, well, the masters, uh, our master students, right? And uh, everything lost for all the way up to chapter three, right? I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, well, nobody will take you seriously because at this stage, the assumption is that you have learned the importance of backing up data. Now, when you use a tool, that enables you to work in the cloud. You're implicitly backing up your information. You don't have to worry about backups. This is why, okay. yeah, when I'm writing things in, in, in a word processor myself, I rarely use a desktop application like so. Everything I do is in here. Everything, everything is in here. All my slides, right? All my slides are in here. So I don't use, no, oh, I'm using PowerPoint. Nope, because I'm implicitly backing up things. I don't have to worry about backups. I don't care if somebody steals my laptop or it, the house gets burnt down to the ground or something. Uh, I, well, of course, I would care because I would lose things, right? But, but the thing is, the data would still be safe. <clears throat> in fact, most of the time, what I do myself is, because the things are in the cloud, um, I, I work from home. I, I leave my machines at home. I go to work. I have a, uh, a machine, right, given to us by, by our employers, obviously. And I synchronize things in the cloud. So these are skills to think about. And I know, uh, I know uh, people are getting bored because these things were introduced to us in 1020. I do apologize for that, but maybe it was a nice uh, refresh, I guess, a recap on EDU 1020. You, you, you worked with uh, Google Docs, Google Sheets, and uh, Google Slides uh, in, in, in EDU 1020, yes. Right? Hello? <laughs> Did you? Well, I, I don't know if you did or you didn't. I don't know if the, the that, that evil laugh, right? Uh, I don't know if that's, yes, we did, or, <laughs> or if it was, uh, no, we didn't. But, but it turns out that these are, no, these are really did, useful. We did, uh, we did learn the documents, the spreadsheets, but I think we didn't really learn the the ones like in the cloud, like the ones you really explore from the Google side. I do encourage you to start doing that, by the way, because you know why you want to start doing that? Uh, when you're working when you're working on your Capstone project next year, uh, if I okay. can show you this, you work in, in parks, right? You don't work alone. When you're working as a group, the last thing you want to do is you say, oh, no, Messi makes a change, right? And maybe she's part of the group with Sheila. Messi makes a change, and then you email that document to Sheila. You don't do that you collaboratively work on a document in the cloud, right? If you look at these, these okay. shared drives here, these are groups of students that I work with, right? So we, we, use, we use these cloud-based uh, services or platforms a lot because it turns out that they're extremely useful when you're collaborating with other people. Extremely useful, tremendously useful. You can, you can exchange emails when you're working the two of you, but the moment you start dealing with, observe, eight people, right? How do you ensure that you're working on the correct vision? But we are straying away from the righteous path here. I do apologize. I don't know if there are any other questions. Uh, the key takeaway point here was for us to get started with these tools, we install these tools, play around with them so that uh, when we start module number two, we are, we are done. And then also take note these resources on Astria. You can already download this. Uh, are there any other questions? Yeah, hey, I want to hey, find out on the... I'm sorry, I, I, should, I, I think I, I don't know where I was rushing to here. I should have started out yeah, by our project, but, um, but uh, we were able to do it here, and I was still and waiting on the topic, and we figured it was, it was probably going to be a bad idea. Bad idea. Bad idea. So sorry about that. Yes, sorry there's a question. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, um, these two, these two uh, tools that uh, we, tools are we are saying we're supposed to download the diagram and the lucid chart. Are they, for are they for making, making relationships, relationships or what? 
yes. So the you see, I, I, I spoke about thank you, class rep. I spoke about uh two uh oh, who is the second class rep? We don't have we I thought we had we said if she if she was sick, what would we do, right? So the the Lucy Chat and um Daya are for ear diagramming. For oh, ear diagramming. Yeah. And then the okay. other components, these other tools here, SQL Lead and DB Browser are going to be for writing SQL statements. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Yeah? That's what we're going to be doing here, right? Secure. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, oh, yes. Is um because I've been trying to according to the module that we have, it's it's uh, it has given us instructions. That's in um, unit five. It's asking us to download. Um, is it Zam? Yeah, that is failing to install on both uh, my my laptops. It's telling me some okay. things I'm not even understanding. Is it? Are we using that? This what the one you are telling me, the uh, SQLite in place of. Um, so, great question. Zam. Zamp, Zamp, by the way, is just a, a platform that, co so you come across WAMP and LAMP and whatnot. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a platform that combines different technologies, right? So yes. the X is for, usually, WAMP was for Windows, Apache, WAMP, MySQL, PHP, right? Mm -hmm. Zamp yes. would mean the X is for anything, Apache, so on any platform, Zamp works on any platform, Apache, MySQL, PHP. So the ZAMP thing comes in, it has nothing to do with this. The ZAMP only comes in when you start looking at uh, the web design component. Ah, oh, okay, I see. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Because for you, when you develop a web application, it runs, within, it runs within a server, right? A web server, which is like Apache in this case. Uh, okay. If it's database driven, if it's dynamic, it needs a backend database, right? Which would be MySQL or M. And then, uh, the, the, the dynamic nature of the application is facilitated by a language called PHP in this case, right? PHP, so which is yeah. the key. Okay. Yeah, but so that won't come up, I think, in module number five or something. Four, five, five, PHP. I think. In, it's in five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. these, these are great questions. Are there any other questions as we are working through these things? You don't have to wait for Lighton to produce screencasts. If you want, you can read ahead and then complement what you're reading ahead with what Light on would have shared on the shrink or something. I don't know. Uh, um, I have, I have maybe a last question. Yes, yes. So basically, the the examples of the the applications you've told us to download, you you just download what works for you, isn't it? But you advise to get those which you'll be using so that we can understand your examples and everything very well, isn't it? Exactly, yes. Because, uh, let me give you an example. A lot of uh, practicals are associated with uh, module number three. Okay. Now, in those practicals, like for instance, in those practicals when I'm showcasing some SQL statements such as this, I will be using DB Browser. Okay. Now, if, if you are using a tool like SQL Lead di Direct on the terminal, maybe okay. it might be confusing if you don't have any background, if you don't have prior knowledge of how SQL statements are written, it might be confusing for you. So if you are using the same tools that Lighton and PL are going to be using, it will be a lot easier for you to follow through with the examples, which is why this is a recommendation, it's not a prescription. Right. Okay. So the tools are being so recommended. So module three, module three, you'll be using DB Browser. Then module two, you'll be using uh, Lucy Chat. The Lucy Chat and Dia. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. For, so for module three, it's not just DB Browser, but SQL Lit and DB Browser. Although, granted, when you install DB Browser, it comes bundled with SQL Lit. So implicitly, you're installing SQL Lit also. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And this is so important because um, it turns out that uh, in module number, f is it four or five? Four. Four or five, I don't know. When, when Pierre introduces you to the case study uh, database, which is MySQL installation, configuration, management, and uh, maintenance, and all those different tasks associated with database management, uh, what you notice is that there's going to be a striking resemblance between SQL lead and, and MySQL. They are all relational database management systems, just like Access, just like Oracle, right? So, but, but so the, I guess 
in this case, I guess for me, it's preference. And from my experience, actually, it's a lot easier to get started with this tool, SQL Lit. It has a very small footprint, right? If, if, if I was to showcase, I like my, my SQL is too bloated because it's, um, that thing is used for enterprise applications, actually. Uh, if, if, in case people are not aware, the UNSA website runs a CMS code, Drupal now, Drupal uses MySQL in the backend. You can't use SQLite because SQLite is meant for small applications like mobile applications. So most of these applications that are developed for mobile platforms will use SQLite as a backend. It has a very small footprint. It's very easy to get started. If, if you were to, to check, I hope I have an installer here. Let me just check if I have an installer. I hope I do. If I was to check the file size of, uh, No, oh, I don't. If I was to check the footprint of the download, the SQL lead download, you, you'd be shocked. It's a very small file. It's not as bloated, right? Hmm. Anyways, but the, it's, and it's very easy to install and use really. Probably one of the simplest things that probably going to, I, I hope the file sizes. Look at this. I don't know if colleagues can, you can see this. Uh, if you yes. look at the sizes, right? This is pre pre uh, take note of the, if we can get to the Windows binary. Okay, these are all compressed, though, but it's fine. Uh, Windows. Yeah, if, I don't know if you can believe that, uh, you see this, 1.7 megabytes. 806.71 kilobytes, right? Of course, these are binaries that you need. But, but you see, the, the entire thing that you need, you need to install, the investor installer is just less than 10 megabytes, right? So it's very easy to get started with this. It's a very powerful tool though, by the way, extremely powerful. It's used in production for most mobile-based applications, actually. Any other questions as we are getting started? Yes, I have a question, sir. Yes. Uh, I'm failing to download the modules. I don't know okay. where the, uh, if I go in files, uh, no, if I go on modules, under modules, I'm mm -hmm. failing to download. Okay. Oh, so, okay, if you want, uh, what I will do is, uh, so if you notice this, the, the module itself, two things about the modules that, uh, and I don't know where this question is coming from, two, two, quest two issues to do with the, with the modules, right, on Astria. Number one, if you notice, right, these files that have been uploaded, you see what's in the square brackets. When you see HTML, when you see PDF, it means it's something you can download. Oh my goodness, I didn't okay. publish this. I'm sorry about that. I thought they were published, not published. Jesus Christ. Uh, oh, when you see something that says PDF, okay. mm -hmm. it means it's, it can be downloaded. It's an actual PDF file. When it's tagged as HTML, it's a document that you can view from within Astria. But what I will do is, uh, what we will do, Pierre and I will again chop up the document so that we again have a PDF version here associated with the module. So you, you will see something to the effect of the tune of, uh, you have an entry here that will say PDF, it will be a file. We'll do that, it's an automatic to do. So the reason you can't download this because this is HTML, it can only view, be viewed via Astria. Granted, you can use your browser and just say print or something, go to browser, and, but this is cumbersome and it's not very aesthetically pleasing, is it? You say save as PDF, like Lighton is doing, and then uh, say save, and then you'll be able to, I guess, open it in here, like so. Uh, but but I'll, I'll upload the PDF document so that you have access to the actual PDFs. I'm sorry about that. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks for that. <clears throat> Any other questions? None for now. Okay. Great. So uh, be on the lookout. Uh, uh, the screencast will be dumped to you, I think, maybe tomorrow, by Monday, though. Uh, screencast associated with module number one. Um, and then I think that by, by, by the sixth, by this week, the week of the eighth, again, the screencast associated with module number two will be done. Because it turns out that module number one is not really that involving its meant to be an introduction anyway. Um, 
Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, unless if there are any other questions. I was asking about the other class rep, but maybe you don't want another class rep. Sometimes Let bad things happen. Volunteered. Oh, okay. That's very unfortunate. But there, there will come a time when maybe you want to someone to speak on your behalf, right? For instance, if you need an extension as a group, you need a representative. Now, if, if Sheila is not around, who is going to represent you, right? If, you always need a backup plan. Now, I'm not saying, well, maybe she's traveled or something or, uh, anyway, but <clears throat> that's fine. Okay, so if, if, uh, if there are no further questions, I'll upload this PDF that I was using onto Astria and then I'll send an email to notify you that it's been uploaded. And then I'll also send out a notification tomorrow, Monday, that the screencasts have been uploaded. Uh, if you have challenges installing those tools, let's uh, and I know but you really want to install those tools. If I were you, I would install them, but it's a recommendation. You see, when you go to the doctor, I don't think the doctor prescribes that you do exercise, but they'll recommend, right? But uh, I guess if you have malaria, they'll prescribe uh, an, a malaria medication or something. But So I am recommending that you install those tools because it will help you understand the notes. Okay, thanks. And, uh, oh, I see Pierre is online. Hi, Pierre. Uh, thanks, and I, I don't know if you have anything to say, Pierre, before we wrap up. I didn't notice you were online. Uh, no, it's fine. Okay, that's fine. Great. Um, he had reached out to me that he was tentatively not going to be able to make it. I'm sorry, I don't know what happened. It was unstructured. I should have apologized. That, uh, because ideally, even though I'm uh, overseeing these modules 1, 2, and 3, the plan is for both of us to be around when we're interacting with you um uh, discussing the various modules that we're handling so so that we chip in and whatnot in fact one person is supposed to be like the person who's checking for comments if there are questions which is oh missy says i can't see us no that oh. was earlier okay that was earlier I don't... it was earlier at 17... Okay. Somewhere there. Okay. Thank you very much. So the slides and the recording will be. All right. Thank you very much, colleagues, and uh, stay safe and see you soon. Bye. If, if, yeah. If I were thank you, you. All of you should Goodbye. Stick thank and you. For another class trip once we leave. Thank you. Bye. Sheila, take note of uh, the, the institutional email addresses. Sheila. Is she around? Sheila. Sheila, are you still there? She is. Her she mic. Is. She's online. Her mic is just off. Yeah, no, I'm just reminding her. Wow. Take note of the, the, the ones are email addresses, the ones that they are encouraging that we use on uh, Lucy Chat. Sheila, your mic is off. Hello? Hello, Maybe Sheila, are you there? Can you choose another representative? Probably that, that will help. Just as you have seen, my light on brought to our light. Maybe one rep won't be enough for all of us. So... Last time there is a gentleman who volunteered. I don't know how far it went. Maybe we choose because it's gone offline. It was uh, Philip Mwanza. I think he's. Also, okay. I think he's. I don't know, busy or something. Maybe we choose someone else who will be much reliable. I know I'm willing.
a male this time take since we already have a female representative on the male side most of the people have left <laughs> i can see gift banda and who is this other man here what a volunteer yourself messy no shina is representing me the female <laughs> <laughs> Sheila <laughs> is representing the female folk. Yes. The male folk don't want to step up. So what do we do now? <laughs> they just have to. It should be a balance. Gift Banda. You can be a class rep. Don't even saying anything. I can see you, Mr. Wisdom Miranda. <laughs> Time to volunteer, Mr. Wisdom Miranda. <laughs> Annie Sandala, you can pick it up. Annie is a female. Hey, is they female? No, they don't want to. Hmm? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so what have you um what have you decided on, on, on finding another person? I was still waiting for a male uh, for yeah. to volunteer. No one has volunteered. No, not yet. And all of us online are females, right? Yeah. Any man. What about this brand? I can see this brand Sinkala, my person. No, I'm just using someone's account. <laughs> I'm actually a female. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm impersonating, right? <laughs> but where is Watson? Didn't he communicate? I think Watson no. is still willing to, to take up the um, the role is just that probably is just busy because I haven't seen him online since um this this whole week. He hasn't been online, even on WhatsApp, I think. So maybe we, uh, I'll try to call him and find out if he's still available. Then if not, we will just have to impose, I think. There's a WhatsApp group. Balis, you're not in that group? No. What's your name? Helen. Helen Amala. I think you should send me your you send me your number. We have a WhatsApp group for Bali's. Okay. Oh, you, you can either it. give your you can give your number to either uh Silomba is uh, the second admin or you can send it to me. And Zakar, I think Zakara is also an admin. So you can either send to him, me, or the other guy I mentioned earlier. But where do I get the lines from Austria? Oh, let me give you um okay give me your number right now oh nine seven six zero eight zero eight nine one nine one ninety one ninety one helen yes um, add, add me as well yes what's the number oh nine seven eight zero nine seven eight eight six eight six Eight three, eight three, eight zero, eight zero. Your name? Martha. Martha. 
Yes. Okay. Just add you just now before I get busy. If 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 Watson is not available, I think we are going to give this road to Mr. Mshimbe. You know him, right? Ninety-one, ninety-one for Helen. So, um, Helen, I'm just adding you now. Okay. Yeah. Um, Eight six We still don't have any other mail online until now. Can see any. Okay. Okay. Uh, the person so is um, okay. So, Ellen, you're already you are in. Okay, I've I've seen it. I've just been added. Okay. Then I'm also doing Martha. Is Martha still online? Martha on the, okay. I think we're just the two of us left now. No. Okay, so I'm done. All right, thanks. Uh, you're based within Lusaka? Yes, I am within Lusaka. Okay. So enjoy your evening. You too, thank you. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Why?